when John F. Kennedy's bold declaration, we choose to go to the moon, wasn't just about space exploration. It was a rallying cry for American technological supremacy, a pursuit he saw as vital for national security and global leadership. Today, bearing his name, the USS John F. Kennedy, or CVN-79, the second aircraft carrier of its generation, is said to redefine naval power. Yet, in an era where military technology shrinks and conflicts become increasingly asymmetrical, a critical question looms. Can a ship designed for over 50 years of service truly adapt to the rapid evolution of threats like hypersonic weapons, swarming stealth drones, and pervasive orbital surveillance? Or will this colossal warship quickly become obsolete? We aim to explore this question today. Few weapons in history have shaped warfare as profoundly as the aircraft carrier. Ever since Japan commissioned its first carrier in 1922, these maritime giants have become indispensable tools for projecting power across the globe. During World War II, U.S. aircraft carriers were pivotal in naval battles that turned the tide, and they've continued to play a crucial role in every subsequent conflict involving the country. Today, when a global crisis erupts, one of the first questions on everyone's mind often is, where is the nearest American aircraft carrier? Decades of unwavering dedication have enabled the U.S. Navy to deploy some of history's most impressive and indeed most costly ships, and the Gerald R. Ford-class supercarriers are the pinnacle of this ambition. These aren't just big ships, they're the largest and most expensive in U.S. history. To give you a sense of their sheer scale, imagine three NFL football fields late end to end. One of these carriers extends even further, a staggering 116 feet beyond that. Its approximate width of 256 feet dwarfs the 224-foot wingspan of a Boeing 747. And at 250 feet tall, the ship stands taller than Bavaria's iconic fairy tale like Neuschwanstein Castle, the very inspiration for Disney's enchanted palaces. Such a behemoth naturally comes with an equally staggering price tag for American taxpayers. The first ship of the Ford class, the USS Gerald R. Ford, cost an eye-watering $12.8 billion for the ship itself, with an additional $4.7 billion for research and development. For the USS John F. Kennedy, CBN-79, the US Navy has already invested $11.34 billion. This impressive cost reduction wasn't just due to technological refinements within the carrier, but also through optimizing the entire design and construction process. While it typically took the US around five years to construct aircraft carriers in the past, the wait for the Ford class was significantly longer. Construction of the USS Gerald R-4 began in 2009, and the ship wasn't commissioned until 2017. However, considering the sheer number of groundbreaking innovations packed into these vessels, few would argue that this extended wait was in vain, especially given what this 100,000-ton atlas inherited and vastly improved upon from its predecessor of the revered Nimitz class. The CVN-79 supercarrier has undergone a truly significant modernization, with its heart being two A1B nuclear reactors. Designed by Bechtel, these reactors generate an astonishing 700 megawatts of thermal power, a substantial 25% increase over the Nimitz reactor's 550 megawatts. This enhanced electrical power is the lifeblood for one of the John F. Kennedy's most revolutionary features, the new Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or EMALS. EMALS, which utilizes cutting-edge linear induction motor catapults, replaces the older, less efficient steam piston catapults. This new system offers a myriad of advantages. It's lighter, more cost-effective to operate, and requires significantly less technical maintenance. Furthermore, the complete removal of bulky steam generation and storage equipment frees up considerable space below deck, optimizing the ship's internal layout. 
This innovation also dramatically boosts the number of aircraft sorties per day by an impressive 25% and, crucially, significantly reduces the stress on aircraft airframes during launch. This expanded operational capability allows CVN-79 to deploy a wider and more diverse range of aircraft, including the very latest stealth UAVs. Beyond emails, electromagnets are also ingeniously integrated into the Advanced Arresting Gear, or AAG, braking system, replacing the traditional hydraulic mechanism for recovery. The new U.S. supercarrier introduces profound advancements in naval warfare. A key decision, as mentioned, was the adoption of the AAG instead of the traditional hydraulic systems for aircraft recovery. This change was primarily driven by the increasing use of drones by the U.S. Navy and Air Force. The older hydraulic system simply struggled to capture these lighter, more delicate UAVs without causing excessive stress or outright damage. The AAG with the turboelectric engine can precisely absorb energy and significantly reduce the impact on UAV airframes, ensuring their safe return. The Navy aims to increase the number of aircraft that Ford class carriers can accommodate. While CVN-78 can carry between 75 and 90 aircraft, helicopters, and UAVs, there are active discussions about CVN-79 carrying a full 100 aircraft. However, it remains uncertain if this ambitious goal will be met with CVN-79 itself or if it's a target more feasible for the third aircraft carrier, the USS Enterprise, CVN-80, which is currently scheduled for commissioning in September 2029. CVN-79 is designed to host a diverse and formidable array of aircraft. This includes the latest Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II fighters, Boeing FA-18EF Super Hornet fighters, Grumman C-2 Greyhound transports, Boeing EA-18G Growler electronic warfare aircraft, Northam Grumman ET Hawkeye airborne early warning aircraft, and Sikorsky SH-60 Seahawk helicopters. For drones, the primary focus is on deploying the Boeing MQ-25 Stingray unmanned refueling drones, which are being seamlessly integrated with the Nemo's catapults and Gerald R4 class arresting gear. The Navy also intends for these supercarriers to serve as forward operating bases for advanced reconnaissance and attack drones, potentially even resurrecting concepts like the formidable Northam Grumman X-47B unmanned combat aerial vehicle. To effectively arm this impressive aerial contingent, the Gerald R. Ford class, and particularly CVN-79, features 11 new Advanced Weapon Elevators, or AWEs. These AWEs, powered by electromagnetic motors, are incredibly fast, capable of traveling at speeds up to 150 feet per minute, and transporting up to 24,000 pounds of ordnance from lower decks directly to aircraft on the main flight deck. This revolutionary design ensures that ammunition movement avoids critical aircraft wing zones, eliminating potential bottlenecks and problems within hangars and on the deck. Consequently, aircraft can be rearmed in minutes instead of hours, dramatically increasing the peak number of sorties per day to an astounding 270, as significantly compared to the 180 sorties of the Nimitz glass predecessors. For prolonged conflict, the sustained number of stories over a month is projected to be around 160 per day. A notable difference between the USS John F. Kennedy and the USS Gerald R. Ford is the installation of an updated Enterprise Air Surveillance Radar System, or EASR, on the former. The decision to switch from the dual-band radar, which combined S-band and X-band radars, was primarily driven by the need for cost efficiency. CBN-79 maintained excellent operational efficiency while saving over $350 million for taxpayers. The EASR is a more easily scalable, cheaper, and unified radar system designed for various U.S. Navy ships, simultaneously reducing logistics and personnel training costs across the fleet. While the loss of Raytheon's ahead-of-its-time DBR, originally developed for the canceled Zumwalt-class destroyers, is acknowledged, the clear benefits of the EASR for fleet-wide integration are undeniable. CBN-79's inherent armament includes a robust offensive suite, 
2 Rim 162 Evolved Sea Sparrow SESM Service to Air Missile Launchers, 2 Rim 1116 Rolling Airframe Missile, RAMS Service to Air Missile Launchers, 3 Phalanx Close In Weapon Systems, or CIWS, 4 MK38 25mm Machine Gun Systems, and 4 M2 Browning .50 caliber machine guns. These armaments are absolutely crucial especially in the context of potential clashes with technologically advanced rivals like China, which possesses formidable weapons such as the DF-21D hypersonic anti-ship missiles. But the United States is not stopping there. It's poised to revolutionize naval warfare with the integration of combat leasers and perhaps even power armor on its supercarriers. While progress on power armor remains under wraps, Laser weapon testing has been ongoing for years with promising results. For instance, over a decade ago, the USS Prune successfully demonstrated a 40 kilowatt laser's capabilities by sinking a motorboat, disarming drones, and even detonating a rocket propeller's grenade. More recently, in February 2025, the USS Preble completed a successful test of its high energy laser with integrated optical dazzler and surveillance, or Helios, destroying an unmanned aerial target. The Helios was developed by Lockheed Martin was first spotted on the Preble in 2022, notably replacing previously installed CRAM. Helios emerges as a formidable contender for the Ford class carriers, but presenting several critical advantages that address the evolving threat landscape. The CVN-79, currently under construction at Newport News Shipbuilding, is expected to be commissioned before the end of 2025. This aligns perfectly with the Navy's ambitious FY 2025-2054 shipbuilding plan, which aims to increase the number of crewed ships to 381, including a robust force of 12 supercarriers, with 10 of those being Gerald R. Ford-class vessels. Considering these incredible developments and the ever-evolving nature of warfare, do you believe aircraft carriers will maintain their relevance in the 2050s amidst future, less obvious threats? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more compelling content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.